Welcome to the Team T1 Health Professional Webinar. The aim of this presentation is to provide the whole diabetes team with an understanding of the Team T1 program so that you may better understand which of the teams that you see may benefit from the program and so that you can support participants after they've completed the program. My name is Kim Duggan Larkin and I'm the Team T1 Dietitian here at DAVIC. In this presentation we're going to cover uh, the background to the program and the development process behind the program. We'll discuss the principles and the philosophies of the program, we'll give you an overview of the program content, examine the key concepts taught in the program, then we'll apply these in a case study and finish up with a brief overview of the evaluation of the program as well as some feedback from participants that we've had. The Team T1 program was adapted for adolescents from the adult DAFNI program. DAFNI stands for Dose Adjustment for Normal Eating. The curriculum and program content was developed based on a literature review and consultation with health professionals, teens with diabetes, as well as clinical and education experts. The curriculum and program resources are based on current evidence, Australian and paediatric diabetes guidelines including the APEG and ADS guidelines and the ISPAD guidelines. Team T1 was piloted with 19 adolescents and parents in 2010. The pilot study demonstrated that the program was acceptable to teens and improved HbA1c, diabetes related distress and self-efficacy. So who can participate in Team T1? The criteria for participation are that the teen needs to have type 1 diabetes, be aged between 14 to 18 years, they need to be willing to inject and to monitor their blood glucose at least four times a day, they need to be able to participate effectively in a group setting, and they also need to have written agreement from their diabetes medical specialist. Suitability for the program can really be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. The participants do need generally to be on a basal bolus regime or using an insulin pump. The program's not really suitable if the teen does not have uh, particularly good English language skills, primarily because the resources have been developed in English. Uh, if they've got learning or behavioural problems that might prevent them from coping or participating in the group, that would also be a barrier to their attendance. We have had slightly younger or older participants in, included in past groups at the discretion of the facilitators. The Team T1 program is strongly focused on self-management. The program is based on a philosophy of empowerment, building the confidence and skills of the participants so that they understand their blood glucose readings and feel equipped to take action appropriately based on what these readings are. Self-management is variable. It does not necessarily mean that the teen is independently managing their diabetes. The extent of the roles and involvement of parents will vary depending on the participant and there's emphasis, particularly within the parent program, on the gradual transfer of responsibilities. And this is to ensure that the teen feels both empowered but also supported. The strategies that have been used to foster self-management throughout the program and the learning resources include using really interactive presentations. The aim is to make the teens feel both comfortable and involved and as least like a school as possible. The facilitators uh, use a variety of open questions and problem-based learning to ensure understanding and also to allow the participants to explain their own understanding and methods that they've used to come to that understanding. The approach of the facilitators is to be warm, empathic and non-judgmental and this is reflected in the language used which is consistent with the Diabetes Australia language position statement. We try to avoid the use of terms such as good or bad, high or low blood glucose levels, instead talking about blood glucose levels as the numbers that they are using terms such as above, below or within target. Individuals are encouraged to develop their own goals and action plans to achieve these goals and all participants are encouraged to contribute and share how they feel and their concerns and their barriers. So what does Team T1 involve? Uh, Team T1 is a five-day structured self-management program for teens with type 1 diabetes 
aged between 14 to 18 as we said. And it runs from Monday to Friday, generally in school holidays, with a concurrent parent program running on the Monday and the Friday of the same week. Pictured here are the teen workbook, carbohydrate counter and blood glucose diary that the teens use during the program. This is the Team T1 uh, teen program timetable to give you an idea of the topics that are covered during the week. Carbohydrate counting is a big focus during the week and there are several sessions across most of the days as well as the lunchtime sessions. Here you can see a few of the participants learning how to carbohydrate count using food labels and also doing some weighing and measuring of pasta and rice. The other major focus during the week of the program is flexible dosing using insulin to carbohydrate ratios and mealtime correction doses. We also cover sick days towards the end of the week, also hypos, coping skills, problem solving and goal setting. We cover some stress management, healthy eating is covered towards the end of the week also and some peer support and self-management. The target practice sessions that take place each morning are an opportunity for the sharing of blood glucose levels and carbohydrate counting to identify patterns and insulin adjustments needed. This is conducted in an open, non-judgmental way to encourage problem solving and to reflect on how food and activity affects their blood glucose levels. During the week we also try to do some fun activities. Uh, generally we include an activity on the Wednesday afternoon, things like laser tag, like these guys have done in Hobart, um, or a circus skills workshop that we did in Ballarat. We also try to take them out to a cafe or a restaurant or a pub on the Thursday. Uh, this gives them an opportunity to practice the skills needed when eating out. And some centres have also included some activities like cooking during the week when they have the facilities to enable this. Now the parent support program, as I mentioned, it's two days running on the Monday and the Friday of the same week as the teen program. And there again you can see the parent workbook that the parents use during the week. The parent programs run in a separate room to the teens. As you can see, these parents here are learning together in an adjacent room to where the teens were working. This is the parent support program timetable. The program covers the key concepts of the teen program, albeit much more briefly, as they've only got the two days. And there's also a big focus on communication with their teen about diabetes. So some of the key topics include carbohydrate counting, insulin to carbohydrate ratios, hypos, sick day management, exercise, communication and support, transition, mental health and stress management, and that's both for the teen and also for the parents. A major component of the parent support program is the social interaction between the parents and the benefits of sharing their experiences. So the other component of the Team, T, Team T1 program is the trained facilitators. So the facilitators of the program are trained diabetes nurse educators and dietitians, and one of each runs each program. And they're trained to run Team T1 through observation of a Team T1 program, uh, an educator workshop, and then also a peer review process where one of their first programs is observed by an experienced Team T1 facilitator. There's also an ongoing quality assurance process to ensure that the curriculum is being followed and, and delivered to the same standards. So here you can see two of our facilitators uh, running activities during the week of the program. Um, as you can see in nice small groups working with the participants. Okay, moving on to the key clinical concepts that are involved in the Team T1 program. The Team T1 blood glucose targets are four to eight millimoles at all times. Below four is considered a hypo and above eight is considered to be above target, again using that language of above target as opposed to high as we mentioned earlier. Participants are encouraged to check their blood glucose levels at least four times a day, both uh, before meals and before bed being the primary times, but also at 3 a.m. at least once a week, before and during driving, before, during and after exercise, to check if they're having a hypo, 
and also when they're unwell. These targets are based on the current APEG and ISPAD guidelines and also consensus of the expert reference group. At each meal, the Team T1 mealtime routine is emphasised. The meals during the program are an opportunity to practice this and you can see some of our participants here doing just that uh, in the, the top picture here preparing their lunch and counting their carbohydrates as they go and down the bottom here sharing their meal together after they've calculated their doses and injected their insulin. So this is the Team T1 mealtime routine. First step is to check their blood glucose level before each meal and it's optional before a snack. Count the carbs that they're going to eat. Work out the insulin dose by firstly using their insulin to carbohydrate ratio and if their blood glucose level is above target, adding a correction dose. And participants are then recommended to inject prior to eating. Participants are also recommended to have insulin for any snacks they're having that are greater than 15 grams of carbohydrate or one carbohydrate exchange. Appropriate use of correction doses is a key aspect of the Team T1 program. For most, one unit will decrease the blood glucose level by 2 to 3 millimole. Participants can adjust this individually based on their experience or if they have an existing correction factor prior to coming to the program. Corrections are not used overnight and are limited to four units initially for safety. Corrections are not given within three hours of the previous bolus insulin dose. The concept that one carbohydrate exchange increases the blood glucose by two to three millimole is also used throughout the week. And this is really used to help reinforce the need to inject for snacks that are larger than one carbohydrate exchange as they will likely result in a large uh, excursion in the blood glucose level. Insulin dose adjustments are made using the stepwise approach to insulin dose adjustment and this is really one of the key the key features of the Team T1 program that has come from the Adult Daphne program. It's a clear systematic method for identifying patterns and making safe changes to insulin doses. So the first step is to identify the problem. Which blood glucose level is it that's out of target? Then they need to think, exclude all other possible causes. So is there anything out of the ordinary that's happened that day? Have they miscalculated their carbohydrates? Have they done some exercise that they haven't accounted for? Things like that. Waiting 24 to 48 hours is really key. That's enabling them to actually to see a pattern to develop before making any changes. Then assessing which insulin is actually working at that time and therefore is likely to be responsible for the out of target blood glucose level. Adjusting the relevant insulin dose by a small amount and then reviewing the, the change that was made to see if it's been effective. Okay, as we mentioned when we looked at the timetable, each morning the participants are invited to share their blood glucose diary with the group in the target practice sessions. This is what the Team T1 diary format looks like and we'll just look at a few of the key features. Participants record the time that they checked their blood glucose level, what their blood glucose level was at that time, any carbohydrates they eat, their bolus insulin dose, basal insulin if it was applicable at that time and also a ketone check again if applicable at that time. They're encouraged to record all their blood glucose levels and all the carbs that they eat whether or not they took insulin at the time. So this is an example of a completed diary and I'll just walk you through a few of the things that this participant has recorded. The comments box is used to record anything out of the ordinary for that day. So in this case, this participant has ended up having an hour run that they weren't expecting to have because the dogs got out. Correction doses are indicated with a plus sign as you can see here. Keeping them separate like this from the main bolus dose makes it easier to see if there's a pattern of needing to correct at the same time of day. So the total dose that this participant would have taken at breakfast time there was 15 units, 12 units for the carbohydrates in the meal and 3 units as a correction. 
Hypotreatment is also indicated with a plus sign also, but in the carbohydrates box. So again, making it easy to identify, they've had plus one exchange of carbohydrate to treat that hypo. Participants are encouraged to record all exercise and make a note of any adjustments that they've made to their insulin or their carbs. So in this case, the participant has decided to subtract what we call exercise carbs from the mealtime bolus uh, before they've gone to do the exercise. And ketone checks. So if two or more blood glucose levels are above 15 millimole, then a ketone check is recommended, which is what has happened in the case of this participant. They've had two consecutive blood glucose levels above 15, and they've done a ketone check and found that they've got minimal ketones. Okay, the program is being evaluated by a number of measures. Acceptability, psychological outcomes, as well as clinical outcomes. Acceptability of the program is being measured with participant feedback surveys completed at the end of the week of the program. Psychological outcomes such as diabetes related distress, self-efficacy, mood and quality of life are being measured through an online validated questionnaire. And you can see the online version of the questionnaire here. This is where the participants log in and this is what the, the questionnaire looks like. The questionnaire consists of the following measures, the problem areas in diabetes teen version or the paid teen to measure diabetes related distress. The WHO5 wellbeing measure, which is an indicator of depression. The Mind Youth or MyQ questionnaire from the Dawn study, which is looking at diabetes related quality of life, family responsibility and conflict. And also the self-efficacy for diabetes management in adolescents. Clinical outcomes are being measured at the same time points and data is also collected through our online database with the health professionals entering this data at the same time points as the questionnaires. Participants are sent reminders via email or SMS to complete the questionnaire before they come to the program at three months and 12 months after the program. Okay, I'd just like to now take you through a bit of a case study of one of the participants that we've had through the Team T1 program. So this person was an 18 year old female. She had had type one diabetes diagnosed since she was about 14. She'd recently finished school and was looking for a part-time job. Prior to coming to the program, she was using multiple daily insulin injections with fixed doses of Nova Rapid and one dose of Lantus daily. Her endocrinologist was really keen for her to start using ratios and using a bolus calculator meter to achieve this. Prior to the program though, the participant felt that she needed more of an understanding of her diabetes, her carb counting and ratios before she would really feel confident and comfortable using this bolus calculator meter and adjusting her doses on a daily basis. So this is her diary page from the week of the program. Her key concerns were managing exercise, learning how to use corrections appropriately, and using ratios and carb counting accurately as these were all new skills for her. Her confidence grew throughout the week and she was able to use her ratios and corrections well. So you can see here that even by the end of the first day she was started to use a correction dose at dinner time and then again the next day she used a couple of correction doses. You can see also from her diary page that she gradually learned how to use her ratios uh, and that sort of gradually improved throughout the week. So some of the doses were not quite um, what we would calculate for a one and a half to run ratio as, as was the case here. So she's given for seven exchanges of carbohydrate, she's given eight units of insulin and I think to get to a 10 unit total, including her correction dose. So that gradually improved throughout the week. The other thing that we used with her is this handy calculator. Some of the participants, particularly those that end up on the ratios that involves halves, uh, find it difficult to calculate the bolus dose using their ratio. So this calculator just makes it a little bit easier. All they need to do is find their ratio and then read down to the number of carbohydrates that they're eating to get the, the bolus dose.
She managed to change her, the way she was managing her exercise by using insulin adjustments to minimise the risk of hypos, which was a, a big change for her because prior to coming along to the program, she'd just been feeling like she just had to eat extra carbs all the time before she could exercise. So after the program, she reported that her favourite things about it were meeting others with diabetes. She really didn't know many other people with diabetes prior to coming along. And she reported that it taught her many things that she didn't know, as well as things that she thought she knew, but was wrong about. Three months after the program, she continued to do well and had, was using her bolus calculator quite successfully. She was continuing to use her diary to review patterns, although not as intensively as during the program, which is generally what happens. Obviously, the week of the program is a very intense focus on their diabetes and back in the real world, Maintaining such a detailed diary doesn't happen every week, but often we encourage them to at least come back to it, say for a week, a month, to really intensively look at how their bolus doses and, and their basal doses are going. Overall, she felt that she understood her diabetes much more than before the program. She also reported that she's now has more regular contact with her diabetes management team, which makes her feel more confident in working towards what she described as better control. Overall feedback from the teen and parent participants has been really positive. Um, you can see some of the, the comments that we've had from teen participants here on the screen. The key things that participants are reporting that they've found useful about the program are the flexibility it gives them, so their insulin is now matched to food, peer support, so meeting other teens with diabetes is a real key, real key outcome of the program. Skills and confidence and opportunities to practice those new skills. And they've also reported things like the normalising of their diabetes, reducing their guilt, shame and uncertainty about their blood glucose levels. The parents have also given us positive feedback. Here's some of the, the comments that they've had following the program. We've also asked the parents what they think they might do differently after coming along to Team T1. And some of the things they've reported are that they'll, they think they'll communicate more effectively with their child, they'll do more carbohydrate counting, focus on the positives and not the negatives, be more involved, prepare a sick day kit and, be, and have more flexibility with meals and, eat, and eating times. So just finally we'd like to acknowledge some of the key parties that were involved in the development of the Team T1 program. So the program itself was developed by Diabetes Australia Victoria with funding from the Australian Government under the Chronic Disease Prevention and Service Improvement Fund. The Australian Centre for Behavioural Research in Diabetes and the Mater Children's Hospital and Mater Health Services are partners in this project. Team T1 was adapted from the Daphne program with permission from both UK Daphne and from Oz Daphne. For more information on the program or to direct potential participants to more information on the program you can head to our website. On the website there's a detailed health professional information sheet and a summary of the clinical recommendations that we made during the program. So that wraps up our first health professional webinar on the principles and overview of the Team T1 program. We will have a second webinar which will provide more detailed information on insulin dose adjustment using Team T1 principles and how to support Team T1 participants with this process. Thank you.